Okay, Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs of learning. Proverbs chapter 2 deals with understanding. Understanding is your relationship to God. Solomon is the wisest man. Because his wisdom came from God. And it's recorded in the Bible. I don't care what a public or college library has of great philosophers and great thinkers and all that. My question would be, what's your standing against God? I know for a surety with the scriptures, Solomon's in heaven with David. Your philosophers, your educators, and all that, I don't know if they're in heaven. I hope they are. But if they write anything that's contrary to God, contrary to Jesus, contrary to Holy Spirit, and contrary to the Word of God, the King James 1611 Bible, it ain't worth reading, and it wasn't worth writing. And let me, I, have, I feel a sneeze coming. So. Uh. Chapter 2, Proverbs. My son, Solomon right into his, his son, Rehoboam. If, that if is conditional. We will have a picnic by the pool if it doesn't rain. If I can get the hot dogs or hamburgers. I will get to work on time if there's no traffic. I'll tell you another word that I am. And I kick religion, okay, with the Bible. That if, the I am, takes all of Calvin, John Calvin's Calvinism, and throws it out the window. Because if God forcibly gets you saved, God forcibly sends you to hell, why does the Bible have if? If is a conditional. My son, if thou wilt receive my words. Rehoboam did it. And he did not adhere to the words of his father's friends. And hide my counsel with thee. And the commandments with thee. Alright, remember I said we could maybe, maybe spiritually apply the Holy Spirit right to us, Proverbs, my son. Would be God speaking to Christians? My son, if that will receive my words. Solomon, it's a book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon and other words that he said that were not put down on paper. And hide my command and hide my commandments with thee. He's not like hide them. To remove them, hide them inside you. Would that not be proper for, for us to say that's a relationship that God wants us to have? So that thou incline, that is to lift up, that's to listen, thy ear unto wisdom, and apply thy heart to understanding. Oh, we got another problem. I titled this Understanding. And I go online and I'm looking up, I, I type in a word in a box, and I'm looking for a good picture I can do for a title of these series. When I did Understanding, I didn't see one picture of a heart. I saw pictures of brains and thoughts. Brains and brains and brains and brains. I forget which character in the Wizard of Oz. He didn't have a brain. He couldn't think. According to the Bible, it's not your head. It's your heart. According to the Bible, you think from your heart. According to the Bible, you sin from your heart. The wisest man ever by God 
It says, as far as wisdom and understanding, you got to get in your heart. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Again, if you're going to go see a psychiatrist, and he deals with your head, you got the wrong profession. You're going to go to education facility, and you're going to fill your head with knowledge? Yeah, you will. But you're not going to learn about God. Apply thy heart to understanding. Understanding with Solomon in, in the Bible is your relationship to God. Get wisdom. How to apply what you know and then how to apply what you know for understanding and put it in your heart. How do you clean your heart? Well, how do you give up a bad habit? You say, well, I want to I stop drinking. you got to find something to fill up that drink. Instead of, instead of a drink, I'm going to have a piece of gum or I'm going to Pray or I'm going to. How do you clean out your heart with prayer, the Bible, and you fill your heart with understanding of the Word of God? Thy word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Jesus said, Sin comes from the heart. In order to clean yourself and get more proper with God, you got to stay in the Word. You got to study the Word. You got to put it in your heart. But many Christians don't read the Bible. And that's why they're utter failures. Churches out there, they got perverted Bibles, or what they say, modern Bibles. It's not the Word of God. So understand as a Bible believing Christian, it's not the head, it's the heart. Yes, I mean, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, you call out to it. Knowledge is what you know. And lifted up thy voice for understanding. James 1 5. You gotta speak. You gotta speak right. You can't have idle talk. If thou seekest her, that could be knowledge or understanding, but it's been wisdom from sonified as a woman. But we, but since verse one, this is all one sentence down to verse 5. They would say in school that Solomon, that was a run-on sentence. People in school don't know what they're talking about. I cut and paste scripture from the King James Bible and I, I attach it to uh, 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 Microsoft Word. I attach it to Facebook. I attach it to something on the computer. And my spell check comes up and says, that's incorrect. Are you telling me that the spell check is telling me what the original English is wrong? A pulley on you. Today we have taken words that had a meaning then and we completely reversed the words. This world is going to hell. I'll trust what the Bible says. So if you seeketh her as silver, Jesus said, ask, seek not, ask. All right, yeah, we can ask God in prayer. We can seek God in prayer. We can knock on door, God's door for prayer. Is one of the things you're seeking wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God? Or the material thing? When you read your Bible, do you read your Bible or do you study your Bible and seeking God to show you things? Now think of her as silver. Silver value. 
and searches for her as hidden as hid treasure. There's all kinds of people out there. They go out looking for treasure. We got a map. We got this thing. Well, we're on archaeology to dig and all that. Do you dig in your Bible? Do you go in the pages of the Bible and say, I want to know what riches there are? Then thou shalt, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. If you don't seek after silver, I mean, seek after the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as silver, and search it out as a treasure, you don't read your Bible, you're a fool, and you're not going to learn to, to fear God. Then, after you seek and after you search, more than riches, you'll understand the fear of the Lord. You'll understand your relationship with God. In fear of the Lord, it's not, oh, terrorize, you know, if I sin, God's going to spread out lightning bolts. No, I ain't that kind of fear. It's fear, you know what? He's almighty, I'm not, and if I want him happy, it's a father and son relationship. Ain't gonna, you ain't going to learn that about God if you're not in the scriptures. All right, Christian, go to college. Go get their wisdom. Go get their knowledge. Go get their understanding. When they teach the Bible's a lie, we come from apes, and the, the English of the Bible's wrong. we got to get a more modern version. And Jesus was just a good teacher, maybe a prophet, but he was not God. What are you going to fill your head with? And that's filling your head. That's not filling your heart. That knowledge ain't going to get you to know God. It's going to get you away from God. And don't even talk about seminaries. Seminaries, I call them. S-I-N. Man, the junk that these seminaries are teaching their students supposedly of the Bible. For the Lord giveth wisdom. How to apply what you know, God gives it. My educator, my wonderful, terrific pastor. We have a great Sunday school teacher. Oh, that guy I listen to C D, that guy I listen to on the radio, that television. Capital G, capital O, capital D, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Including Jesus Christ. You know why the Jehovah Witnesses have no wisdom? Because they don't think God is Jesus is Jesus God. You can't say they don't have wisdom. Mr. Jehovah Witness. Right here it says, John says, My Lord, my God, and there's no reproof. Can you explain that to me? Well, if we go over, no, 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 explain this to me. Well, you know, the, you know, the thing you would, no, no, stop chasing rabbit tail. Tell me what this Bible verse is said. And they get angry and mad and walk off your driveway because they have no wisdom. Oh, it's, I know what the wisdom is. I know what the, no, I know what Tom said. Tom has said, what's the wisdom? He's God. What's my understanding? He's my God. I know God, and God knows me, and I'm saved, and I'm known in heaven. And God is using me as a proper vessel when I'm clean, and I repent of my sins. Out of, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So you're going to go to a God-forsaking, atheist, agnostic, Mormon, Jehovah Witness, Confucius, Confucian, somebody who doesn't know a male was in between a fam female, you're going to go to one of these morons in any education facility, and you're going to think that they're going to teach you more than God, the Creator that made everything. 
You know, no one in science can explain gravity. Yeah, I'm so smart. I put the reach the plumb. All right, explain to me gravity. How is it? What is it? Where is it? They can't. Ask him another question. Who named the Earth? That's a good. That's a good TV trivia question. One thousand dollars. Question: Who named the Earth? I don't know. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. God did it. You think they're going to answer God? You think the television game show is going to award the person a thousand dollars if they say God did and quoted the scripture to prove it? That'd be edited out, kicked out, thrown out. Can't say that here. You better pray for you. Listen, there's nothing wrong with going to doctors. I'm off. Jesus said, they that are whole don't need not a physician, but they that are sick. You, be, you, know, you need to go to a doctor. I'm going to a doctor. You better pray that doctor, that God shows that doctor wisdom, understanding, and knowledge when it comes to your health. The car goes in the garage. You better pray the Lord gives them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to fix your car. You need that wisdom knowledge and understanding in your life to survive from God, not from an idiot who rejects God. Because that guy's going to stand before God one day and Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. You're going to listen to him? You better watch what man you or women, woman especially in a pulpit or a podium in, a, in any religious forum. Because if that person ends up one day standing before God and hearing, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That guy taught you all the wrong knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. When one gets up and says, our traditions of our church is much more standard than the Bible, that guy needs to go bye-bye, that guy needs to go out the window. It is the Lord that giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. What is the mouth of God? It is the King James Bible. The King James 1611 authorized Bible. You know what? I can't say anything. I cannot say any other Bible. I can't. All those other modern Bibles on the market, that's not a King James 1611 authorized version Bible, it's copyrighted. I could get in trouble with the wall for saying it. God says, hey, my book is free. Go ahead and copy. You'll deal with him if you use it wrong. You know what Solomon writes all about? Writes about the Lord. You want the world? You want philosophy? We've got... Oh, uh, we got 30 more chapters. I'm not going to say 39. <laughs> all right. We got 30 more chapters, and Psalm is going to write to us a book about worldly philosophy. Lord willing. And then again, you know, the time we're, we're coming to the end time. We might be in glory by then. Then what would your educators know? You have both took them. Oh, they, they all got together, went out somewhere in a wilderness somewhere. I don't know what happened to them. I like to see them explain how bodies of a grave come up. It's apocalypse. No, it's God. Get, I, you know, I got to know, and I have this in several places in my Bible. So I'll read it often. This is written in the pages of my Bible. Always give God the glory and repent when I do not. He, God, Layeth up sound wisdom. So there's other wisdom. It may not be sound. You can learn nuclear physics, okay, and get good paycheck from nuclear physics. But that's going to do you no good in New Jerusalem. That ain't going to do you no good in hell. Get your good paycheck. But a good paycheck ain't going to get you crowns, rewards in, in New Jerusalem unless you use it for the Lord. 
And if you don't know the Lord, you're not going to use your money and your resources properly of wisdom and in understanding towards God. A guy goes out, he gets himself a great career, a knowledge of a great career, and his wisdom is he, he, he does that job and he gets paid well. A lawyer gets $400 an hour. And without with understanding, they don't do anything for God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, or missionary, or the church. And out in the eternal life, that absolutely meant nothing. A man who makes minimum wage, and he knows how to do his job, and he, he does his job, and he knows God, and God knows him, and he puts his life in practice of serving God with Bible reading, with prayer, and church. And he understands God by giving God of his money, giving God of his time, giving God himself. And at the judgment seat of Christ, he'll find himself with gold, silver, precious stones, maybe an inheritance, and crown. Solomon is saying, look at all what God can give. Never mind what man can give. Now you need a good education to get a job. But that ain't going to help you in eternal life. For the righteous. Sound wisdom for the righteous, not unrighteous. Unrighteous the lost man cannot get sound wisdom. So, everybody's welcome to church. That lost man sitting in that church, listening to messages, even from a King James Bible, is a member of that church. Maybe a deacon of that church. If that man is not saved, he's not going to get sound wisdom from God. Because he's not righteous. You're never righteous when you reject God. Rejecting God is rejecting Jesus Christ. Let's say you got the same man. He's in church. You know, wonderful God, great, and all that. He doesn't read his Bible. He doesn't pray. And he's just there because, you know, look how great and wonderful he is. <laughs> he ain't going to get sound wisdom. And how many of those people are behind that pulpit? How many of them people are teaching people and they don't have the sound wisdom of God because they're not righteous? They don't confess their sins. I know, you hate the Bible. You hate me, but you hate the Bible. You don't hate me. Because I'm showing you the Bible. I know, Jesus told Paul why he persecuted out me. He, God, is a buckler. That's like a belt buckle of armor. That's an armor. Unto them that walk uprightly. Take that unrighteous man. That, that man is not living according to what the Bible says. Is he upright walking? No. So he walks around like those people that walk around with their, their pants below their butt. And it looks stupid. And you could have a you could have a three piece suit, a tie, nice shirt, and, and you're walking around just like they are with your with your pants hanging below your butt. He God keepeth the path of judgment. Yeah, you not need to be king. You know it. it you can have somebody go through law school. I'm talking about a perfectly, I'll say a saved man, he loves the Lord. And he can make himself all the way to a court, to be a judge in a courtroom. And you know that that guy is not going to be 100%. That guy is going to have to cancel some cases because how the police handled it. Maybe the evidence was destroyed or... I don't know. I can't do a Solomon pull a sword and cut the baby in two. 
I mean, that judge, though he's saved and all that, he's going to make some improper judgments. God will never. You know why God has the paths of the judgment? Because he has wisdom, he has understanding, and he has knowledge. Now you take an unrighteous judge. He has no God, no Bible, has no understanding, and he sure don't get sound wisdom. And that man's going to stand before the judge one day. Judges better realize, whether you're right or wrong, you're going to stand before the judge one day. And you don't vote for him either. That was extra, no charge at all. And preserve it, that means keep up Keep well, save it for later, the way of his saints. I'm glad it's not dead people like the Catholic Church says. I'm preserved by God. I'm saved and I'm preserved. I'm like blueberries that they take and they can, they put it in the jar and they seal it up, and I can have this later. Then, shalt thou understand righteousness. Wait a minute, he lays down wisdom for the righteous. Then, when you got the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and you're seeking God, and you're trying to do right, then thou shalt understand righteousness. The more you're in the Bible, the more you're, you're, you're talking with God, the more you're confessing your sins, the more fellowship you have with God and Jesus Christ, never mind, you know, fellowship to church. The more you grow in the Lord, the more you grow in His Word, the more you grow righteous, and more the Christians look at you, you're a fanatic. No, I'm in the Bible, I'm correct, and what you're doing is the world, and you think it's right because you're not studying the Scripture. And you're listening to another moron who doesn't know what he's doing that came out of seminary. And if you don't like it, we'll end up in the judgment seat of Christ and we'll find out. And I believe I'll get the gold, silver, and precious stone. I believe you're going to get more day or so. The more you get into God, the more righteousness you're going to get. And the more righteousness you, you get, the more the Christians that don't do right and are not up walking uprightly, are not seeking God's wisdom, are not seeking God's knowledge, are not understanding God, they're going to look at you as a fruitcake because they're half in the world. What do you say about it? He's a buckler to them that walk as uprightly. They're the ones walking around with their pants below their butt. They think it's cool and great, but the whole world's laughing at them. That's Christian. And many of you are offended, but I don't care. And judgment. Thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment. Well, why would God have two hurricanes come? Why would people have to suffer in Louisiana from, from three hurricanes when you had one big hurricane Katrina say, you know what, we don't need to be living here. You're out in California. Well, you know, we get all these earthquakes. Maybe, you know, we shouldn't be here for the big one. Because you haven't learned your lesson. You're not seeking God. You're not, you're not repenting to God. And God's trying to get you to repent. And God's got to get that whip even more out. And I realize, you know, these hurricanes, this nation does not honor God. We're ready for this one. Baptist Christians have added a fourth member to the Trinity, Donald Trump. And don't tell me that doesn't anger God when you're not supposed to have any idols. We don't worship him. You mention him more than you do Jesus Christ. You defend anybody who has anything to say about him. 
I get offended. I, I, I don't act upon, but I get offended. I don't like when I hear the name of Jesus Christ blasphemy. Look at where. Some of you get like that when you hear Donald Trump in bad case. I said I was going to say nothing, but I did. And equity, that's that's fair balance. Yay! Every good path. If you walk in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God, and you gain more, and you do it righteous, and you confess your sin, you're studying the scriptures, and you're praying to God, Every good path. So how do you explain Christians and churches out there who are walking in the worldly ways or we have no need of nothing and we're just rich and great and famous? And God says, no, you're miserable, wretched, poor, and naked. Why is there two conflicts? God is right. Guess who's wrong? But guess who thinks they're right? And when you show that passage of scripture to them, guess who they think is going to, are going to be wrong? And they're walking around with their pants below their butt. Hey! If the shoe doesn't fit, you're going to say, wow, this is a great message. I like this. And if the shoe fits, or the pants are below your butt, you're angry. I've come to the conclusion all the people who are upset in my life with the Word of God because I've said something to the Word of God that offended them. And I've said many things. And if you get offended at something I say through the Word of God, then I, 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 I touch that nerve through the Holy Spirit, the work of God through Jesus Christ. When wisdom entereth into the heart, and knowledge is pleasant, I am appalled when I hear preachers out of a uh, chronicles is so boring. What did you just say about God's word? I like Chronicles. I have a problem reading number seven, but I've read it. I lose track in number seven. And I've got it all laid out where I don't get the track. But How dare you? After reading the pleasant of, of, of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how dare you say, how about this one? Well, we're not going to study this, this book because it's just repetition. Can I say, oh my God, for a moment? What is, what is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? What is some way most people memorize their scriptures? Band-Aid for that wound. Pleasant unto thy soul, not flesh. You know what pleases God when you're studying, reading your Bible, and praying? Praise and singing a new song to God. Praise the Lord. I think we learned that in Psalms. That's what pleases God. I'm a deacon of this. That don't please God. That don't please God. Discretion. Oh, that's lacking today. Shall preserve thee. I'm already preserved, but discretion will help you even be more preserved. What? My reward 
the gold, silver, and precious stones, but I get the fear of the Lord, of the knowledge. It's like, God doesn't want me to do that. I need to stop that. And I'm getting less chances of wood, hay, or stubble when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ. My works will be preserved if I'm right with the Lord. When I do get Jehovah Witnesses that come to the door, according to Second John, I do not bite them in. I don't say have a good day. I deal with them with the Bible. I don't try to befriend them. I don't be cute. I give them offense of the Word of God. Now, if I don't know my Bible, and I'm a nice little Christian, I just love on them. I just help them out. And then they send them over, have a good day. Your rewards in heaven, it says, has not been preserved. According to what we just read. And there are a couple places in the Bible that says, your reward, not your soul, your reward can be lost. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. I got, I got a note here from a mess. You want to stay out of trouble of your own doing? Discretion and God's understanding. Now, I'm not, I didn't say get you out of all trouble, did I? You say, Sally, well, well, what's wrong with your foot? Diabetes, and I ate wrong for most of my life. Why do the people hate you at the farmer's market? Because I preach the gospel the Bible tells me. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man. There is deliverance from the man that speaketh forward. That's a word that's going to start showing up in Proverbs a lot. That means it's vile and wicked. Speaketh forward thing. He's an orator of wickedness and vileness. You know what they say. You don't want me to mention the wickedness of orientation, of speaking, of politics, and behind pulpits. You know what? I won't say nothing like that. There are men of politics and women of politics. There are men of churches and women of churches and religions that their speech is proverb. And the Bible says, knowledge, wisdom, understanding will keep you from that. You don't have no discretion because you know this this party is the most wild, wicked, weird party of all but mine. You mean the guy has been divorced many times, the guy who has caused several bankruptcies of his business, and the guy is as prideful with anything. That's not discretion, my friend. I had a Christian the other day post on Facebook, you know, tax teach your children that taxes is, is extortion. And I wrote back, like, didn't Jesus pay taxes? Didn't Paul and Peter say he paid the tribute? tribute? No wisdom, no knowledge, no understanding. But I got it of America, but I ain't got it in the Bible. Just hurry up and get this November thing off, and I won't be talking politics after that. I'll be back on Santa Claus. All the Republicans are now, please, Santa Claus, please, please, Santa Claus, please, please, Santa Claus. Okay. Who, this is the evil man, who leave the path of righteousness. Righteousness. That's an apostate. You know what he just said there? Here's a man that was doing right. He left the path of righteousness. That means he was on the correct path. And he moved himself to speak 
forward wicked things and be an evil man. Ooh, that's happened in churches. The guy is right, and then he gets wrong. A Christian walks right, and then he just turns and goes to the world. And that, that, that's not just in the realm of, of religion and Christianity. I mean, that could be, the same thing would be a guy, he's, he's in one of the armed forces. Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marines. Hope I didn't forget anybody. He's serving his time, right? He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Let's say Navy. He's in the Navy. He, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a sailor. And he's a good sailor. Well, how would he leave the paths of being a sailor? He come, becomes a traitor and starts selling secrets to our enemy. Benedict Arnold would be a great example. He, he was he was with, with the Americans on that, and he traded himself to the British. You know, to the British, Benedict, Benedict Arnold was a hero. Not to the Americans. And you know a man that has turned away from God becomes a hero to those who have turned away from God themselves. Why they're mega churches. Ta-da! A group of people that turned away from God and they got another man that turned away from God too. We're all happy. Whom they are. Let's go get let's get one step worse. Now let's fight the world in so we all can get together. I know you wish me shut up. To walk in the ways of darkness, no light, John chapter three, verse nineteen. A saved man can walk in the light and then go totally opposed to God. As one, I forget if it was the man in the cage or the man that was in bed in Pilgrim's Progress. One of those men, I forget if was saved and he just lived his life most miserable. And like we talked about the other night, it was just, he got beyond no help at all. He couldn't even repent. Because there's no spirit of the Holy Spirit in him to have that repentance to God. Once saved, always saved, but that doesn't mean you're going to stay clean. Who do rejoice to do evil? Again, listen, I, I say, Stolly, shut up. I've got to point to these churches today. They're outright doing evil. I'm not going to go far to say they're saved or lost. I don't know, but the practices of some of these churches are evil. And they were, they were in the path of uprightness. See, I'm, see, I teach, once saved, always saved, but you can blow it. How did they blow it? They left the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God and went and got the worldly wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's called, a big word starts with a C. Compromise. There's a big word that starts with a C that prevents you from compromising. It's called conviction. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness. Again, that's that's the forward, just more wicked. That's the first time that word shows up, forwardness, of the wicked. The extreme wicked of the wicked. That's what it's saying. Not yielding to, disobey, perverse. That's what it stands for. Romans chapter 1 is a great verse on that. Whose ways are crooked, and they forward their path. The more they work, walk, 
the more their paths get wild wicked. And when the church does it, we had a church one time we were in that they had VBS. And, okay. They brought in perverted Bibles and gave them to the kids. Next VBS, we're all going to dress up like clowns. Hey, I got a clown suit that looks like I'm a clown upside down. And then what kind of crap did you have the year after that? What kind of crap do you have the year after that? Because you can't you can't underdo the last VBS because you gotta overdo VBS, so they'd be more thrilled in the VBS now than the VBS back then. Yes, I'm against VBS. That's my conviction. And no, you won't change me. To deliver, that's the discretion of verse 11. Thee from the strange woman. All right, let me tell you something about Solomon. He had a thousand wives. When Solomon speaks about wives and women, pull up a chair and say, I ain't saying a word. And Solomon will say some pretty feminine gross things about women. He had to learn the hard way. Do you know what angered God with Solomon? That broke the, the nation of Israel into two? He married wives and went after their gods. Solomon became an idolater. So, now the strange woman. That don't mean she's got antennas and, and three noses. Now, strange is usually a Gentile. The stranger. Solomon married them women too. Those are the ones that got him in trouble. To deliver thee from a strange woman. Discretion. I'm a born again Bible believing Baptist Christian. I met a girl. She's Catholic, doesn't go to church, and cusses up a storm. I'm going to marry her because I love her. That's not discretion. Especially when the Bible says she has to be saved. I know a woman. I'm not going to mention her name. And I heard the other day, a woman, I didn't marry a guy, but still, one thought that the guy was saved, he pretended to be saved, and then after marriage, both of them. And her life was most miserable. The other woman, I heard the story, well, after we're married, I'll change. I know we're talking about women. He's talking to his son. To deliver thee from the strange woman. Even from the stranger with flatteries with her words. To butter you up. To put you in the oven. And cook you for an hour and a half. And ruin your life. You've got to realize there are three types of women out there in the world. I'm looking for a woman for a wife. One of them is the daughter of God. Another one is the daughter of the devil. You have your father the devil. And another wife is the one of the world. That's Lot's wife. I don't know if Lot's wife... I mean, the Bible says Lot was just, but didn't say anything about his wife. I don't know. if She was a woman of the world. When you go reading through your Bible, Eve was a woman of the world. She wasn't devilish. She wasn't holy either. What's that tree? And the devil uses flattery with her. 
which forsaketh the guide of her youth. Now, I'm going to take that this woman is Jewish. For the fact is, the guide of her youth, she's been brought up on what a Jewish girl has been known to be taught. She's been taught up in the law. She's been taught how to be a proper Jewish woman, and she forsook it. The Bible says, cut off. That would be, a, it would be a safe to say stranger or a Gentile. And he would be saying if it's a Gentile, her parents tried to bring her up right. If a Jewish young lady, they brought her up in the Lord, they brought her up in the law, they, and she forsook it. And forget it, the covenant of her God, capital G. Now that's got to be a Jewish girl. And that's a double enmity, because not only have you told took taken a work a girl who is flattering you and she's left God. If she's left God, guess what she may drag you to do with her words. Too many marriages have been destroyed because one Christian party has got involved and married another Christian party. I've seen that too. Now, let me tell you, my first wife, Lisa, we dated, we met, we were un she was unsafe. And before I got serious, serious, I brought her to the pastor of the church. He witnessed to her. She got saved. I was there. I witnessed the whole event. I think a week after that, she was baptized a week after that. Then I said, then I, then I, uh, then I proposed to Lisa. There would have been no proposal if that woman ever did not trust in Jesus. You said, what would, what would you have done if she walked away from the pastor's office unsafe? I give her at least two more or three more times a planning, a watering, and eventually, if she would have not ever gotten right with God, she would not have been right with me. For her house inclineth unto death. That's plain and simple. We don't need a modern Bible for that. She's going to kill you. Her paths unto death. Haven't we been reading about righteous and broader paths? This strange woman is just as bad as that evil man who was what? Uprightness. She forsook the God. Solomon's closing in chapter 2. Here's a man that did right and he's leading people astray. Warning. Number two, here's a woman who was right and she's leading her spouse away. Warning. And it does happen. None that go unto her return again. There have been marriages destroyed from the very foundation before they said, I do, when they should never said, I will. Now, I'm not talking about a marriage where you, 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 you and her have no relationship with God, and one of you gets saved afterwards, and the other one don't get saved. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you're saved, and you have another opposite sex, i got to say that, and you want to get married and that person doesn't have anything, will not have anything to do with God. Warning. You are about to make a bad mistake. And will be if you have children. Now exceptions pull the room. I'm not saying signed, sealed, delivered, 100%. Neither take hold of the paths of life. You know what Solomon's saying for someone who's married all these women? You know what you don't read for Solomon when he's caught with all these women? 
You never hear him repent. Give me book, chapter, and verse. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men. You're not a good man if you mess up your life by the wrong woman. And keep the paths of righteousness. For the upright, opposite of the man that verse 15, 16, 17, shall dwell in the land that's not church. That's in the land that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are under the law. We are an Israelite. And there heaven was the land. That's not church. This guy would be cut off. And he may not be able to live in the land by marrying somebody he wasn't supposed to marry. And the perfect, that doesn't mean 100%, I mean someone who's trying to do right, shall remain in it, the land. Israel, the land. But the wicked, okay, now Solomon's always doing this contrast. Right? Wrong. Negative? Positive. The wicked shall be cut off. That's very important words when you're dealing with the law in Israel. If a Jew was cut off, he lost it. He don't get it back. So what Solomon is saying, cut off? Danger. Shall be cut off from the earth. There's that land. When I... When I'm going, I'm absent from the body and presence of the Lord. I'm going to heaven. For them, they, the land. And the transgressors shall be rooted out of it, the earth, or the land. 